Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at a Keynesian cross example. Uh, we're going to work through a few things. We're going to go and uh, solve for our general uh, equilibrium level of national income. Uh, we're also going to go through and you'll notice that we have here just a little bit of a shock that we're going to engage in and we're going to evaluate the impact of the shock on our equilibrium level of national income. We're going to go a bit above and beyond what this question is actually asking though. And we're also going to go take a look and solve for our level of savings, our level of public savings. We're going to calculate our level of consumption. We're going to calculate our level of net exports and we're going to calculate the capital account. Uh, we'll also go through and do this for both before and after the shock that is illustrated here. One of the big things to keep in mind is any question that I ask you is essentially just one of these parts. So we're going to go through the whole thing, going to take a look at the whole thing. Say you get stuck and you're like, hey, I can't remember how to calculate public savings. We'll just jump forward to that part of this video and we'll walk through how to calculate public savings. Or, hey, what do we mean by capital account, capital flows? How do I calculate that? Same thing. Just jump forward, find the spot in the video where we start talking about capital flows, capital accounts, and we'll have the walkthrough as to how to solve that aspect of the question. So first thing that we need to come up with, of course, is, well, we need to figure out what is our equilibrium level of national income, and we need to solve for this irrespective of any of the other stuff. And the way we do that is and i'm sorry you're gonna to have to excuse my chicken scratch i'm using a bit of a new tablet and not quite used to the uh display uh, pen input just yet so what we have is we have our planned aggregate expenditure and we know that that is equal to consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus net exports and there we go there's the display already messing up let's just clean that up a little bit Okay, from here, we need to open up our consumption and our net exports into their corresponding consumption functions and net export functions. So let's do that. Consumption is our marginal propensity to consume 1 minus our tax rate <clears throat> times y plus c. So that's our consumption function. Again, I don't know why this keeps jumping down. Let's just clean that up. Then we're going to have just autonomous investment. That's just autonomous investment. Then we have our government expenditure. That is just government expenditure. And then we have our net exports. That is going to be our net exports function, which is exports minus the marginal propensity to import times y. So just to kind of connect that dot again, consumption function, that was all of that. Net export function, that was all of that. At this point here, we are good to start to kind of get our inputs. That is to go over here. We can take our values from our table and start inputting them into our equation to begin to simplify. And this is just plug and play. So we go through, we have a marginal propensity to consume of, I'll just go back to the color. Uh, we have a marginal propensity to consume of 0.65. We then have one minus our tax rate we have a tax rate of 0.45. Uh, we then have Y, we don't have GDP, we don't have Y in there, so that just comes forward as Y. We have little c, this is our level of consumption, that is 1600. And then investment, okay, 1700. We have government expenditure, that's 1300. Carrying on exports, where's that? 1750. And I'm starting to run out of room here a little bit. I got a little bit more. 1750. Oh, sorry, I did plus. We want to go minus our marginal propensity to import times y. Where's that? Marginal propensity to import is 0 0.09. So we want to go. Uh, let's just clean that up. Minus 0 0.09 times y. Okay, so in this functional form, what we'll notice is we have two kind of components. We have the one component that is all attached to a y, 
And then we have all of these parts that are just some number. So again, what we can do is we can just consolidate all of these values that are just some number, and we can consolidate all of these parts that are part of y. So to start off with our induced components, that's what I have in the red there. We have 0.65 times 1 minus 0.45. That yields for me, da, 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 da. that is 0 0.35. Seven five y, and then we have that part over there. So let's go minus zero point oh nine y, and then we have all this green bit here. So what does that work out to? We have sixteen hundred plus seventeen hundred plus thirteen hundred plus seventeen fifty. That gives us our autonomous level of expenditure as 6350 $6, dollars To continue to simplify our induced components then, we have 0.3575 minus 0 0.09, and so that gives for us our final form, which is our plan aggregate expenditure equals 0 0.2675y, and that is plus 6350. Okay, now that we have this, we can begin to go through our process of solving for equilibrium. Solving for equilibrium is just invoking our equilibrium condition such that that equilibrium condition is when y equals planned aggregate expenditure. Planned aggregate expenditure, of course. Planned aggregate expenditure, planned aggregate expenditure, planned aggregate expenditure. So what we get is just y equal to, what do we just solve for? 0 0.2675 y plus our autonomous of 6350. Notice we now have a y common to both sides. Because we have this y common to both sides, we can now go and just isolate it. And so bring all the y's to one side and solve for what they work out to be. So let's go do that. We're going to get y minus 0 0.2675y. And, oh, that's a bit of a jump. Let's try that again. 0.75y. And that's going to equal this 63 50. What we have to remember is technically, although we don't write it, there is a 1 in front of that y. So 1 minus 0.2675 gives us 0 0.7325y, which is equal to 6350. Or finally, and let me just scroll down a little bit here so we have some more room. Finally, what we can do is go and divide both sides by that 0.7325, and we get y equals, well, this is just y equals, so that's going to be our equilibrium level of natural income, and that's going to be 1 over 0 0.7325, and times our autonomous, 6350. So, what does that work out to be? Well, 1 over that guy, that is 1.7325. Let's carry around a few decimal places here. 3652 times 6350. And again, the reason why I do it this way here is because this value is our multiplier. How many times a single dollar multiplies around our entire circular flow? And then our level of autonomous expenditure. So keep in mind how always always this equilibrium level of natural income simplifies down and you can monopolize on this and just go straight to this step if you're comfortable is we get our multiplier as just one divided by one minus the marginal propensity to spend times our level of autonomous expenditure so autonomous expenditure just to remind ourselves we just worked it out but that was c plus i plus g plus x. 
that was autonomous consumption, autonomous investment, autonomous government expenditure, autonomous exports. And our marginal propensity to spend was our marginal propensity to consume, one minus our tax rate, minus our marginal propensity to import. So if you feel comfortable with it and you can recall this, you can always just jump right to this step, put in your values here, and don't have to go through all that algebra to solve this final bit. But let's just clean this up a little bit and actually solve for our answer. Okay, so what do we get? We get our equilibrium level of national income as y prime equals, and what does that equal? So we got our multiplier times 6350, so we get $8,668.94. Great, so that's our initial equilibrium level of national income. Awesome, amazing, part one done. Let's just quickly do a little cleanup, a little tidy up, and then let's go to. Okay, so we've solved for our equilibrium level of national income. From here, we can now go and solve for a few other things. Uh, that is, we could solve for our level of consumption. We could solve for our level of savings. Typically, when we just say savings, we mean private savings. We could solve for our public savings. Uh, we could call, solve for our national savings, and then we could do our net exports or our capital account. And how exactly do we solve for each of these? Well, let's just take a quick look here. To start off with consumption, all we'd have to do is invoke our consumption function, and that is our marginal propensity to consume, 1 minus the tax rate, times y plus c. Okay, what do we use for y? We use this value of equilibrium level of national income that we just solved for. How do we solve for savings? Well, savings, keep in mind all we have is some level of disposable income, that's income after tax, and that income after tax can either be spent on consumption or savings. So if we go income after tax minus our consumption, the leftover is our savings. So we just need to solve for our consumption, and then disposable income minus consumption equals our savings. Again, what's disposable income? Well, disposable income is our income after tax. So this little value right there, 1 minus d times y, that's our value for disposable income. What about public savings? Ah, public savings is just the level of savings we have at the government level. And so to figure this out, we would need to work out all of the government expenditure, all of the money that they're spending, minus all of their revenue all together that they are earning. So all of our government expenditure minus our tax rate times our level of income. Again, income is that value up there. Those two together are going to yield for us our public savings. Uh, what we've got to keep in mind, though, a little bit odd with the way that we write this function. This is really the government budget deficit function. So a positive value actually means that we are dissaving or borrowing. We're running a deficit. A negative value means that we are actually saving money. Uh, to write it not as a deficit function, but to write it truthfully as a savings function, we would just write it this other way. That would be ty minus g, revenues minus expenses. So sometimes we're interested in deficits, which would be the first case. The second case would, I guess, truthfully be how you could get your public savings function. National savings? Ah, for national savings, this is just going to be our private savings plus our public savings. So as we go through that, that's just going to be whatever we calculated here for our private savings plus whatever we calculated there for our public savings. So that's going to just be our savings plus our public savings. So that is we need to calculate these two before we can calculate that one. 
net exports. Net exports is just our exports minus our imports, but keep in mind we have a net export function. So we would have our autonomous net exports minus marginal propensity import times y. Again, the value we'd use for y, our equilibrium level of natural income. Finally, our capital account. Our capital account is just going to be really definitional. We need to recall that our current account equals our capital account. And if we kind of wave our hands and make some assumptions, we can go and say, hey, our current account equals our trade account, which is our net exports, which would equal our capital account. Typically, these equal in magnitude if we were to express it based off of this value of net exports here. We would have to say that our capital account equals the inverse sign of our net exports. And that would be so that our capital outflows, money going out, is negative, and capital inflows, money coming in, is positive. So we would just have to go negative net exports. That is the value for our capital account. Okay, let's quickly go through and solve for these guys. Let's uh, just make some room here and go through that. So starting off with consumption. Consumption is equal to our marginal propensity to consume. So 0 0.65 times 1 minus our tax rate, min minus 0 0.45 times Y. Well, that's GDP that we just solved for, $8,668.94. And then all of that is plus our autonomous consumption, which is $1,600. Okay, as I go through this, I typically go through and solve this guy first on its own. And the rationale there being is this is my disposable income. And that's kind of interesting to know is, hey, what income do I have after taxes are paid? And so if we go 1 minus 0.45 times $8,668.94. There we go. We get a level of disposable income of $4,767.917. So that's the amount of income we actually have to play with after we pay our tax bill. So again, just to carry down the rest, marginal propensity to consume times our disposable income plus our autonomous consumption of $1,600. That's going to give us a level of consumption of 0.65 times disposable income plus our autonomous. We get consumption of $4,699 and we'll go 15 cents. So that is the value of consumption in this economy. Notice in this case, it's just a little bit less than our level of disposable income. Savings, our private savings, well this was as we said just our disposable income minus our level of consumption, so we can work that out. We have our disposable income just calculated above as $4,767.917, and then we just calculated our consumption to be $4,699.15. So to do that, 4767.917 minus our consumption, that gives us our level of private savings to be only $68.77. So there's our level of private savings. Carry on, we could look at public savings. Let's just change colors so that we can uh, kind of have just a bit less clutter maybe altogether. Our public savings, let's just use that one where I said, hey, let's just take all of our taxation revenue minus our total government expenditure. So our taxation revenue, we pulled that out as 0 0.45. Again, where does that 0.45 come from? That is our net tax rate of 0.45. And then we have our level of government expenditure. Sorry, not level of government expenditure. We have our GDP of 8,668.94. 
And then all of that is minus our government expenditure. Our government expenditure is 1,300. So to go through that, we get our public savings as 0.45 times our income, 8,668.94, minus all of the money we're spending, which is $1,300, meaning we're having public savings of $2,601.02. Together, our private savings plus our public savings yield for us our national savings. So if we take our 2,601.02 and we add our private savings of 68.77, we're gonna get national savings of $2,669.79. So there's our value of national savings. Finally, let's uh, maybe go over like this a little bit. We have our net exports. And I say finally because net exports and capital account really are one and the same, more or less. And so our net exports is our exports minus our imports. Imports being marginal propensity to import times GDP. So to get our values, our exports, we're from our table there. Let's see if I can find that. Our exports, exports were 1,750. So we have 1,750 minus our marginal propensity to import. Where was that? 0 0.09. So 0 0.09 times our level of GDP, which we said was $8,668.94. What does that give us? That gives us a value of net exports of 1750 minus 0 0.09 times our GDP, 8668.94. That gives us our net exports of $969.80. So again, this is a positive value, meaning we are exporting more than we're importing. We're left over with a bunch of income. Well, what do we do with all of that extra income that we're left over with? Well, just like in your personal account situation, if you work a whole bunch and you don't spend all your money, what do you do with that extra money you have left over at the end of the month? You have to put it in the bank. That is, you have to buy a financial instrument. So in the same way for the country, we have all this extra leftover money, $969. What do we have to do with it? We have to buy some financial instruments. So as we buy these financial instruments, this is money leaving. This is a capital outflow. So we would have a capital outflow of $969.80. And that is our capital account. Just like I said, the inverse of our net exports. Okay, that was the process of going through and solving each and every aspect of this. Of course, there was a lot of explanation in this, uh, going through and saying, hey, this is where everything comes from. Again, what I want you to keep in mind is any one question will just be solving any one of these. That is, it would just be saying, what is our net exports? What is our capital account? What is our consumption, savings, public savings, et cetera, et cetera? Would it have you do all of this all at the same time? But to the question actually at hand, which we've completely gone away from, none of this was even in the question that we were talking about. This question is, the government of Telesto engages in a massive infrastructure building program causing a change in G equal to 91. Okay, let's see how we can work through this. Let's do that. Well, what we would want to do is really go through and say, okay, we have this infrastructure building program causing a change in G of 91. We would need to be able to discern for ourselves, is this an increase in government expenditure or a decrease in government expenditure? Well, okay, in this case here, if we are engaging in an infrastructure building program, we're spending a whole bunch of money, 
this is in effect getting our level of government expenditure change in G to increase that is it's gone plus 91 that is for all intents and purposes we have our initial government expenditure let me find it here of 1300 we would have a new government expenditure of 1391 what we would need to do is we would then need to resolve for our value of GDP given this new value of government expenditure and so there's a few ways to do this we can just hey we know this was the question instead of solving for this initial GDP we could just solve for GDP with this new value and then there we go we'd be done say we had done what we've already done though and we've already calculated GDP and we want to know okay great government expenditure has increased by how much does our existing GDP change by? Well, you can recall, I kind of introduced this formula earlier. I said that it kind of simplifies down to be GDP equals one over one minus marginal propensity to spend times autonomous expenditure. Kind of just put a little break here between where I'm working and what we have in the past. Okay, we have this. This is ultimately how we went and calculated that $8,668.94. What we can also do is if the only thing changing is an aspect of our autonomous expenditure, so that would be changes in autonomous consumption, investment, government exp uh, expenditure, or exports, if we have a change in any of those guys, well, then it's going to simplify to this that the change in GDP is going to be equal to our multiplier times the change in autonomous expenditure. So it's just going to work out to be that impact altogether. So, okay, what was our multiplier? Well, we'd have to go back and look that up. And in this case here, that multiplier was based off of our marginal propensity to spend and that is all together let's just remind ourselves there that marginal propensity to spend was 0 0.2675 meaning that hey that multiplier altogether was one divided by one minus that marginal propensity to spend we said we had a multiplier of one point uh, what do we say? A few extra decimal places? 3652? Okay, so we have this multiplier of 1.3652. Some room. Change in A. Well, that is this change in autonomous expenditure of 91. So we have a change in A of 91. What does that translate to us? Well, let's take our multiplier times 91, and we witness that our change in our equilibrium level of national income, change in GDP, is equal to $124.23. What does this mean? Does this mean this is our new value of GDP? No, 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 no. What this means is that we had our initial value of GDP. We had our initial value, we'll go Y naught prime, of $8,668.94. Again, where did that come from? Our initial value of GDP as is up here. Then our GDP has increased by 124.23. So if we take our original of 8, 866894, we add that increase of 124.23, we get our new value of GDP. We'll call that Y prime 1 for the new one. And that's going to be $8,793.94. That is going to be our new value of GDP.
So again, ultimately, there is the two ways we could have solved for this new value of GDP, this new equilibrium level of natural income. We could have used our initial table of information, solved for our initial value of GDP, worked out this change in government expenditure, and with that change in government expenditure, gone through and said, hey, increase in 124, we get this change. To be honest, this is a lot of steps. Probably the easiest way to do it would be just right from the start, say, hey, we have all of this information, great, but government expenditure is changing, that is increasing by 91. So let's just update government expenditure to 1391 right from the start. As we update it to 1391 right from the start, we can just go through and instead of solving for this GDP, go right through and we would solve for the new GDP, the new equilibrium level of natural income. Finally, I'm not going to go through it all because it's just all the same steps. But what you should notice is because this has changed our equilibrium level of natural income, our consumption, well, that's going to have a new value of GDP, new disposable income, a new value of consumption. Savings, well, new value of consumption, new disposable income, we're going to get a new value of savings. Public savings, we have new GDP, so we're going to have new levels of taxation revenue, we're going to have new public savings. Going on down, national savings, well this was just our savings plus our public savings, so as each of these update, so does that guy. Finally, net exports capital account, new value of GDP, new value of GDP means new value of imports, new value of net exports. If our net exports are changing, well then so is our capital account. So all that to say, as our GDP changes from $8,668.94 up to $8,793.17, all of these things that we've calculated, consumption, savings, public savings, national savings, net exports, capital account, all of these guys will change and update as well and will need to be recalculated. Again, I'm never going to have you do all of that all at once. It would just be any one situation and I would just say, hey, calculate the new one or just calculate the change in it. So not nearly as exhaustive as this half an hour video is altogether to go through every possible option that's there. Hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions on how to work through any of these parts, if any of this was unclear, well, of course, feel free to reach out. You can comment below or you can send me an email or post on the discussion board. Thanks for watching.